Hi, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. I'm Sophia Stacey. And I'm Natasha Wernick. And we'd like to take you on a journey to see some of the best artists in Australia. I'll be filming. And I'll be your host. So come with us and enjoy this unique opportunity to enter artist studios and see how they do what they do. We all have the ability to be artistic and we are going to show you some fabulous artists to inspire you to pick up that paintbrush and get creative. Hello and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Today we're in the beautiful city of Toowoomba in Queensland and we're going to see Brandon Wachner do some of his wonderful mystical paintings. You can see behind me there's this beautiful pencil pine that features a lot in his work but you're going to be taken on this wonderful journey of how he tells stories through his paintings. But let's go and see what he's up to in his studio. Okay, so here we are in Brandon's studio. Brandon, welcome to Colour in Your Life. Thank you very much, Sophia. Oh, it's so lovely to be here. And as you can see, Brandon's work is quite magical and, and, and brings the viewer into the picture, I find. You're actually a self-taught artist. Yeah, I am. I started when I was about 23. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just been a real journey for me, uh, basically developing what I would say is my own style. With your work, it's that the viewer almost wants to go into the paintings mm. and, and uh, explore them. But we've got a blank canvas here. Yeah, that we do. Let me get out of the shot and let's see how you create one of these magical pieces. Let's paint a landscape, hey? Yay! Okay, Brandon, how do we start one of your beautiful paintings? Alrighty, so we're going to start off with the sky. Um, we're just going to be using a cobalt blue hue and uh, white and mixing them together and kind of, um, well, let's just get to it, hey? Let's have a look. Alright, so I like to use water a bit just to kind of extend the paint. And the idea is, is that we're going to get the white and we're going to run it over top of the blue so we get variations of colour. Um, a lot of the time I'm just using two colours, but when you mix them together on the canvas, uh, it can kind of make it seem like I've used like many more. Mm -hmm. And now we're about to start going over top with the white. I've dipped my paintbrush into some water and now I'm applying some white. And again, with some water. Now the problem is, um, it takes quite a bit of time to understand how to actually do this properly. Because if you use too much water, it's gonna run and it'll, it'll look terrible. Or you'll have to overwork it to the point where it doesn't even look like you've done it in the first place. And then we're gonna glide it across. And it's just gonna give us a little bit of variation. And we cut it into the rest. As we were mentioning, you're self-taught, so this is just a technique that you've just found yeah, yourself. Yeah, complete experimentation. Mm. But um, see, that's one of the things I truly love about painting, is that you can't really do anything wrong, um, but you learn so much in your mistakes. And painting really was like a therapy for you. Oh yeah, definitely. In 2014, um, February, my dad passed away. Um, he had uh, terminal cancer and uh, it was, he was dying for a very, very long time. Um, and after he passed away, I felt just adrift. Uh, I guess I would say I was uh, completely numb for quite a while. And then um, six months later, um, I was driving home from work and I had a pedestrian try to commit suicide in front of my car. Oh my goodness. And 
Yeah, I, I, I was, guess I was in that state where I didn't really feel anything. I was still quite numb. Um, but uh, for some reason I started painting and I felt like I was whole for the first time in a very long time. Through a very emotional time, yeah. you found art. It made me find myself, to be honest. I definitely would not be here without it. This is a story we hear quite often of how art can really heal the soul. Oh yeah, definitely. No matter what kind of day I've had, if I've had a bad day, I can come home, go to my easel and everything's fine, you know? And I can be having a terrible time until I'm in front of my easel and then it's, yeah, it's gone. My recommendation if you wanted to do like a sunset or a sunrise, I guess, um, we would wait until it dries and then we would reapply the sections that are like a true white and then bring the yellow up or down when it's around the right way. And so a good example of the sky that you were just mentioning is a painting you've got called Salonia. Yeah. Salonia is a good example of doing a sunset like that. Basically using like a heavy white and being able to bring it in later um, so it doesn't convolute with the blue and make a green. Alright, so where do we go from here? Okay, now, um, so we're happy with the sky so we're going to put those paints away um, and we're going to bust out the uh, hog bristle fan brushes. Ooh, this is the exciting bit. Looking at your work it seems like there's this extraordinary amount of texture, almost three-dimensional and multimedia but it's just acrylics and the exquisite use of this fabulous fan brush. Yeah, acrylics and um, just layering over top. And I love your easel and you were saying that you actually got a friend to make it. Uh, what I did is I went online, I found one of the most difficult easels I could get someone to make and I got him to make it for me. And I ended up with this and I absolutely love it. Um, there's a couple of parts in it that have been replaced. Um, I get him to replace this about every year because I have a tendency to wipe my brushes off on it. And as you can see, it's very lumpy. Um, so usually I will gesso my paintings um, because I like having a very smooth surface to paint on. It makes the skies 100% easier. Now there's a piece that I wanted to bring up called A Place to Dream. The pathways that you use in your paintings, it inspires the viewer to want to, to get in there and, and go and explore these wonderful little villages that you design. With A Place to Dream, I wanted to create a very weird varying of perspective, but still make it look magical. And there's a lot of these kind of little castles or towers that you put into your paintings as well as those big pencil pine trees. For some reason the pencil trees, I just, I just love to do them to be honest. What I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of create like my own trees yes. um, in which I think I have kind of done with my uh, pencil firs because they do seem texturally like quite different to the actual tree. Well Toowoomba is actually it's a very interesting city. It's ripped in history from there's the Cobb and Co Museum which is with the old horse-drawn carts mm -hmm. but it's also called the Garden City so I oh, can yeah. see why you get such inspiration from doing these beautiful landscapes. We have um, the botanical gardens and we also have, well I'm sure we have many many more gardens but um, also the Japanese gardens which are absolutely glorious. It's almost uh, like a forest woodland. Okay now so we're going to be putting a path in, uh, I'm going to get some yellow ochre along with our raw sienna and uh, burnt sienna. Alright so we're going to take our dark brown and we're, just like before I'm going to use this as our backdrop as well. And Brandon in most of your paintings there's all these sort of paths that helps the viewer just move into the painting. All of the pieces are part of my journey that the path is like a representation of that. And you've actually got one called the path. Yes, yes. The path is actually probably one of my most favourite pieces, mainly because it's one of the first pieces that I had actually sold. 
One of the first exhibitions I was able to show my pieces at, I sold Village Life 1 and The Path, and to be honest, both of them are my, some of my favourite pieces. I believe the piece called The Path actually led you to win the Inspiring Creativity Bursary Awards. Part of winning that award was getting a workshop with Daniel Butterworth, which yes. must have been quite fantastic. And he's a very acclaimed portraiture artist himself. Yeah, yeah. His work is beautiful, to be honest. Um, the way he can meld colours together to show faces and have it look real is, um, yeah, it's incredible. And still, to me, absolutely mind-boggling. So. I won an award that um, was a week-long portraiture class, which I was absolutely terrified about because I had never touched portraits before. And, but his class was comfortable and the way he was teaching us allowed us to kind of express ourselves freely. And I see that your portraits you painted on cardboard. If you uh, see his Facebook post, he paints on cardboard quite a lot. Okay, so again, I'm just getting my dark colours down. Now, when you were younger, you were saying that you were really fascinated by electric motors. Somebody that you really looked up to was Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla just amazed me. Um, I think I learnt about him in sixth grade and how fundamental uh, he was to create the society that we have now. Um, with the creation, well, the invention of uh, AC electricity. And um, yeah, um, I remember going to Silly Sully's with my grandma and dad, and they would buy me those little $2 remote control cars, the ones that had the wire running to the car. And then I used to love to pull them apart, reassemble them, mix and match. I don't know, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, so now that I've got my path in place, um, if I wanted to darken it, generally what I'd do is I would let it dry and I would um, make a bit of a wash. And generally you would want it to be a bit opaque so you can show uh, transition of colors, but it completely depends what you want. You might want a dye path or you might want a really light path. And in that case, I would recommend highlighting it with uh, maybe a white. Because with the white, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be like a true white, it would be quite opaque. So it would just be highlighting the uh, raw sienna, maybe turning it considerably lighter. So the basis of this is you just want to keep going through, create a texture on the canvas. A variation of colour but at the same time once it dries you're going to want to go back through it with dark and then back through it with light. And uh, so if people can want to come and see more of your work they can go to your website which is brandonwachner.com but they can also go there and find out about workshops you do that are really about how to bring out one's imagination to their paintings. For the overseas viewers, you, you can do it online now. Yeah, they can. And um, you can basically see every painting I've painted since I started. All right, so I want to add some flowers to this. Some flowers? Yeah, I figure green and yellow isn't just, it isn't enough. But it's a very good base. Um, to paint on and try to bring flowers into. Uh, really thinking about putting water at the bottom of this. But um, we shall see, hey? That's the beauty in your artwork, is just seeing this creative process unfold. And when you say flowers, it's like some of the other paintings you have, it's like a field of flowers. And I can see you're just sort of dabbing that excess paint off on your Fabulous easel there. Yeah, um, basically because um, if you apply too much pressure, you're gonna get too much paint on and it's not gonna give the expression that you want. And plus, if you do it that way, you can use certain sides of the fan brush to um, apply more paint, apply less. For example, I would probably run it 
if we're going to term that running off, um, running off the paint, um, you would do that less the closer you get to the front. Yes, giving it that depth. Yeah. And you sort of just running across, it's like the ridges of some valleys in there, deep in the distance of some mountain range. Yeah, and um, the softer you apply it, um, the, more, the more it seems like it's further away. The good thing about this Arteza paint is uh, it textures quite well. If you overwork sections, you're gonna get to the point where you're gonna have to sand it back because you won't actually be able to work with that area anymore because it's too dimply. But the lighter I'm pressing my brush, the more opaque it's gonna be. So the dark behind it is gonna make it considerably darker, like more, probably more of a magenta. Though this is a bit of a candy, isn't it? The colors that you use, they do bring upon this sense of peace. To be honest, I, I have an absolute fascination with pinks for some reason. So we're just gonna keep going with the pink just a little bit, uh, just for the foreground. So we have a little something to work with. Um, and then we'll get some yellow out. So one thing I've found with um, Hogs Bristle brushes is that some of them can be really straight and some of them can be really chaotic. And honestly, my favorite brushes, um, Hog Bristles, are the ones that are really chaotic. Instead of it being straight, um, it's kind of all over the shop. So it's not so predictable. And that is exactly what we want. And we're actually in your gallery, or shall we say showing room at the moment, but you have this fabulous studio, which wasn't quite big enough to fit in for us to yeah. film. My studio is um, probably, I don't know, maybe two by eight meters. But it's very cool and, and perfect for you to oh, paint um, in. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just adding yellow to this pink that we've made over here. So we've got a nice orange. Um, I'll probably just make sure we don't have too much on the brush. Another thing I find with your work that it would lend its hand to is to create a storybook. Ah, that's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I have a uh, primary school teacher that I still keep in touch with. His name's Barry Hughes. You know, he was a very loving teacher. And um, obviously, since I'm still in touch with him, he still is, you know. But uh, he was telling me that he would see my work make an awesome kids book. And um, I kind of started creating scenes a little bit more so that they would link together. Uh, with the possibility of being able to do that one day. Now, um, the paint should be almost dry enough for me to be able to lick my finger and just run it along. Bit of your DNA in there. Just a little bit. <laughs> just some fingerprints. All right. So obviously the light is coming this way, which we never really addressed, but um, that's how it's turning out. So we'll go with that. And something very exciting about um, us filming today is that your artwork is actually going to be sent in a time capsule to the moon. I know, incredible, right? <laughs> and that's with the help of Dr. Samuel Peralta. He's a physicist, a sci-fi author, and a curator. And he's been working with NASA and SpaceX to send a time capsule of artists, authors, musicians, and the creative minds on the earth today for future generations. This is a project that's been developing for quite some time and there's three launches that are going to happen. But all of the Colour in Your Life shows, including yours, Brandon, is gonna to go to the moon. Isn't that no, fantastic? Right. Unbelievable, but yeah, it's happening. We'd actually really love to thank Samuel for his generosity and his vision to make this happen. It's such an amazing project and if anyone wants to find out more about it, they can go to the website which is lunacodex.com. There's all sorts of information on there about the whole project and how it's working with NASA and SpaceX, but uh, it is, it's really exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting. Um, one thing that I have liked to do and I find works quite well is to just 
If we kept bringing that down, uh, let it dry, and then did a wash of Viridian, okay. makes it seem like it's just a reflection of the uh, landscape. Interesting, yeah. But the interesting, the weird thing is, is that you have to kind of invert the way you've painted it. So it's a, it seems like a reflection because if you just keep going with it, it's quite obvious. You've yes. just chosen the laziest way to do the water. So I'm doing kind of what I did with the sky. Um, I've got Viridian on my brush and I've got white on my brush and we're just gonna apply it and see how we go with it. Wow, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? And so you're not bothered about having a bit of this colour and a bit of that colour on there? No, that doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm just going to take Viridian on my brush and I'm going to wet it. One of the things about your work, it's got an incredible vibrancy to it. See, the thing that I've found is that um, I can't do reproductions. So if anyone asks me to do a, a commission of another painting that I've already done, I can't do it. I find... Um, It'll look similar, but it doesn't, it's missing its heart in a way. I suppose the thing that's the beauty of it though is that uh, there's never ever going to be two that are exactly the same and this is why people love collecting your work. Yeah, that's true. They're, in, they're definitely individuals. Okay, Brandon, well you're saying that, that you've really got to let that dry before you can um, put on the next layers mm. and move forward. But I'd just like to thank you so much for having us in your studio. Your work really inspires imagination. Thank you very much, Sophia. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure being interviewed by you. And thank you, Natasha. You've done such a good job. Thanks, Natasha, for being up behind the camera. Hmm. Okay, viewers, what a very special day it was. Brandon, thank you so much for having us in your studio. Thank you so much, Sophia. I just love your work. I lo I'd love to just sort of crawl into this painting, you know, like follow the pathway up and go up into the castle. And all of your artwork, people can go and see it on your website. That they can. Uh, which is? Uh, it's www.brandonwachner.com. Easy peasy. And if you want to go and visit there and ask Brandon about his workshops and you being able to inspire people to get in touch with their creative mind, you can go there and sign up. Yeah, if you have any interest, please just let me know. Okay, so if you want to come and see more of the Colony Life artists, you just go to colonylife.com.au and there's more information about the Lunar Codex project too, which is super exciting. Mm. Isn't it? It's really cool. Super exciting. Um, but this is the time when we say, remember to, to make, make sure, sure you put, put some, some colour in your, in your life. life. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.